We just pulled the planter out of the shed after winter storage and just want to review some of the key features that you should check over on your planter when you first pull it out. So the first thing you want to do is maybe do a quick visual on your leveling of your planter when you're hooked up to your tractor. Once you get to your field, that's going to look completely different. Field conditions change from year to year and you want to put a level on your hitch to make sure that your, your planter is level. If you're not level, the real reason for being level is that affects the pitch on your row units. If you're too high on the front, uh, it lifts up the front of your planter and then puts more pressure on the back of your row unit. If you're low on the front, that changes your, your pitch again. So it lowers or puts more pressure on your discs and lifts up the tail of your row unit. What we're after here is precision and accuracy. That's the whole key message with corn planting. Whether you're on a smaller planter like this, it's only 20 feet wide, or you get up to some of the larger planters, which take much more time and, uh, and, and more effort to, up, to level and check. So there is more work with larger planters, but still this planter, we expect probably to spend uh, at least two days on it, just going through it, just checking all the features of it. So it is, it is time well spent in my mind to make sure your planter is running correctly. Some of the other things you want to do with your planter is actually physically remove some of the parts. So in this case, I've removed the gauge wheel uh, from the planter so we can get a better look at the, the disc itself. So the, the disc here is really important. That's what, that's what cuts the trench and opens the trench and, and starts your placement for your seed. So you want to, first of all, know the disc you have and know the diameter of your disc. In, the, in this case, this disc, uh, as new, is a 15-inch diameter disc. You want to measure your disc. When it gets down to 14 and a half inches, that's, that means it's time to replace it. Also, just check the edges of your disc to so make sure you haven't hit a rock or bent a disc or you have some other problems with your disc. The clearance on the disc is also very important. So a way to check your, your disc clearance is take a couple business cards, put them in, your, in the front of your disc, in the back of your disc, and that space between your business card should be around two inches. That's a good gauge to tell if your discs are spaced correctly. If that space is too wide or too narrow, then you have to take your disc off and, and shim your disc and get that space set correctly. The other reason for taking uh, some parts off your disc is you want to check your scrapers. Make sure your scrapers aren't worn or bent or there's issues with your scrapers. And from there you can go one step further and actually take a disc off because between your disc is your seed tube. So you want to check your seed tube to make sure that it's not cracked or you have uh, uh, maybe some dirt or something got stuck in there or you had maybe, maybe birds build a nest in your seed tube. That'll affect how your seed drops down your tube. That affects your placement because your placement of your seed is also very important or, or is the main, main feature you're after here. So, so removing parts is never, is never bad. Then this way you can also start to check, check individual components too and, and feel how they move and check for play in each component. So it, it's a good thing to, to actually physically remove parts, which takes time, but it's time well spent when looking at your planter. So when you get to finally come around to the back of the planter, this is where you can check each individual row unit. There's a lot of moving parts on the row unit that you want to check. So you have your parallel arms and all your linkages in here. You want to grab the tail section and wiggle it and move it and feel for any play that could be, uh, could be caused by worn bushings or anything in the row unit. Check your depth setting. This is your, your depth control is right in this uh, mechanism right here. Make sure that's all moving free and, and everything's moving well in there. Um, then when you get down to your, uh, your gauge wheels, uh, check your gauge wheels to make sure they're all turning free. Um, and from here, you can actually see the space between your gauge wheel and your disc. There should be just slight clearance between your disc and your gauge wheel. So have a look at that. Uh, make sure your closing wheels are all turning right. Your, your springs and your controls on your closing wheels are all functioning correctly and moving. There's multiple different uh, types of closing wheels you can have. Uh, we did have the smooth closing wheels on this planter before. We just changed to the spike closing wheels. Last fall was wet and we figured going into spring we might have uh, wet conditions and maybe a little tougher conditions to deal with. Your disc and, and closing wheel can create sidewall compaction. The spiked wheels can actually be a little more aggressive in there and fracture that sidewall, reduce that, that risk of sidewall compaction, which is something you'll check when we actually get to the field to ma actually make sure that you're, you're closing that furrow, checking your alignment and making sure that's all straight. You also want to check your closing wheel space and your clearance. There should be an inch and a quarter roughly between your, the spikes on your closing wheels. Those should all be the same. If not, you can shim those as well and adjust that because if your, 
disc is not lined up or your uh, row units are worn, they'll, they'll pull to one side or to the other. And then your closing wheel will be running to one side of your furrow and will affecting your furrow and closing. So making sure that your, your seed is at the correct depth and your closing wheels are doing their job because this is all what you need to do. You have one shot at planting and if everything isn't working correctly, you're already uh, decreasing yield and causing problems in the field. So physically removing your metering system off your planter is always a good idea as well. You can take, take your whole system apart. In this case, you can check your brushes to make sure your brushes are all in good shape. Uh, in this case with a vacuum planter, you want to make sure your, your gaskets are not worn or cracked, which can affect your seed pickup, um, which obviously affects your, your skips and doubles and drops, so that can all come into play. That your knockout wheel, if you have it on your meter is functioning correctly and make sure obviously too to make sure you have the correct plate in there this particular plate is for corn so if, say for instance last year you planted soybeans or a different crop with your planter make sure you have your right plate in for the crop that you're planting so these these are all important things to look at in your planter from here when you do put your planter back together or your meter back on uh, you can check your your vacuum lines to make sure your vacuum lines aren't cracked and that they all fit in correctly and all, like I said, all your seals and caskets are functioning correctly as well. The last thing I want to touch on was safety. One thing we should always do is check all the lights on the planter. Make sure your flashing lights are working, uh, all your electrical connections up to your tractor are in good shape and functioning properly. And then from there, move up to your tractor. Make sure your tractor lights, your flashing lights are all working, your beacons are, are working well. Remember, we're moving down the road slower than uh, than a lot of vehicles out there, so you want to be safe on the road, you want to be visible. Um, and then from there, into your tractor cab. We're getting more monitors in their cab at all times. Uh, you want to make sure your line of sight is clean, uh, making sure those monitors are positioned uh, uh, you know, low and, and out of the way so that you have a good line of sight out of your cab. Clean windows is also another good thing to keep, keep in mind to make sure you have good visibility out of your cab because uh, planting season is really busy and hectic. We don't want to uh, have an issue on the road or, or anywhere else like that. We all want to come home safe at the end of the day. So uh, for us and, and everyone on the road, stay safe and have a good planting season. When you're looking to choose a corn hybrid, there are a number of characteristics or traits that you need to look at. Um, first in my mind is yield. So you can go to a number of different sources to figure out how different hybrids are, are yielding, talk to neighbors. Talk to your local agronomist at Richardson Pioneer or a person like myself with DeKalb and just get an idea how these things are, are yielding in your area. Probably the second most important in my mind would be the uh, maturity of the product. It is smart to grow uh, at least a few different hybrids on your farm with different maturities so you're, sp you're spreading out the workload. Another thing to consider would be the trait package. Um, we at the Calb now, we're selling basically two types of corn. Uh, there are, are corn hybrids that are just Roundup ready, so just a herbicide resistance in there. I'd say the majority of the products we're selling are VT Double Pros or ribs. That would be a Roundup ready type corn with a couple of genes for corn borer, so insect uh, protection. Uh, very important to choose there. Other agronomic characteristics that we need to consider would be things like standability. You're looking at root lodging, stem lodging, intactness. While we're harvesting, get an idea on test weights. Different hybrids weigh up differently. The higher the test weight, obviously, the better. Another characteristic to consider that is important would be disease resistance. There are a number of diseases of consequence in Western uh, Canada. But probably the main one for us to, to look at would be Goss's Wilt. But definitely look at the hybrid and how it's rated for disease resistance. Another factor that uh, corn growers are going to have to consider and probably take it a little more seriously than we have in the past would be your herbicide uh, program in your corn. Um, what's changed in recent history is we now have glyphosate resistant weeds uh, showing up in Western Canada. Here in Manitoba, we're talking about weeds such as water hemp, which is a very nasty weed, kochia, giant ragweed, common ragweed. We are starting to see these populations show up. So with glyphosate resistance showing up, uh, it, it gets a little more difficult to control weeds in a corn crop. So growers are gonna have to consider doing other things or adding other things to the program. We do a lot of things well in Western Canada. 
rotating herbicide groups throughout the crops, that, that's worked well. Tillage, very important in weed control. Uh, things like crop rotation, very important. We are doing a good job there, but despite that, we do have these weeds showing up quite often just moving in from the south. So one thing that uh, we do need to do a better job on and, and growers do need to consider is tank mixing, different modes of action in the same application. A tank mix is a really effective way of delaying resistance. So if you don't have these weeds on your farm, um, using a tank mix will slow the, the evolution of resistance on your farm. And it will also control existing population. So if you do have these resistant weeds on your farm, you're gonna have to look at a tank mix. Do this early. You know, early application, smaller weeds are easier to control. Uh, you're gonna get more of a yield boost with uh, weed control early in the year. And get out there and scout and make sure you're controlling the weeds. There are a lot of digital tools in the marketplace today. After a grower has planted the crop in springtime, we will come out with crop matrix. We will do some scouting in the field and do actual plant counts. These plant counts are all geo-referenced and gives us a, a good idea on whether or not we hit our target seeding rate for that field, for that hybrid. Different hybrids require different seeding rates. We use crop matrix to go out and verify that we achieve those targets, achieve those plant populations out in the field. The plant populations are recorded and it's all geo-referenced. We also use tools to record our weather events, moisture and temperature data throughout the year to see how our corn crop is progressing. Throughout any growing season, there are a lot of things that are out of a grower's control. But monitoring these events that happen through a corn crop's life is very important to establish a baseline on how that crop grew during that year and how we can improve on it next year and hopefully increase our yields going forward. Our key to success really is a accumulation of the data, but also analyzing that data and comparing it to our budget and our yield goal that we laid out at the start of the year. Our goal with digital tools is always to stay on budget and maximize our returns.